My, my name is Peter Pridal. I come from Switzerland from a startup company called Clockan Technologies and I would like to, uh, to show you results of our, our research and development in uh, last year. Uh, it's, it's about uh, WebGL application in a browser. Uh, what is WebGL? WebGL is an extension uh, of HTML5 standard. Uh, in HTML5 you have, you have Canvas tag uh, where you can draw your, your own thing inside and WebGL allows, allows you to use hardware acceleration on the graphic card uh, to draw into this Canvas stack. Um, the WebGL is based on OpenGLS, ES. it means it's supported by, by all, uh, all uh, graphic cards producers, or all big graphic cards producers and uh, by the way it has also acceleration on, uh, on uh, mobile devices. Uh, the WebGL itself is not supported yet uh, on, uh, on iOS, uh, but the hardware of, uh, of iPad and uh, latest iPhones has the capability which is required to, to have uh, hardware accelerated rendering inside of a web browser on these devices. It's just not yet turned on and Apple is on the board of WebGL um, commission, uh, so, so it's very probable that it will come later on. Um, in this moment, WebGL is supported in uh, Firefox stable versions, Chrome stable versions, in Opera. In Safari, it's, by, it's supported, but it's, by, it's uh, turned off by default, unfortunately. Uh, Microsoft is not on the board, uh, so you have to use a Google Chrome Frame if you want to have WebGL uh, inside, inside of Internet Explorer. Well, uh, let's, let's show you something. Um, the, the WebGLers project allows you to, uh, to zoom and pan on the maps, but also turn, uh, turn it, uh, the visualization into 3D, of course. Uh, although all what you see is a JavaScript, JavaScript application, uh, no plugins, no extensions in the browser, you simply go to the website and, uh, and uh, it's, it's in there. So, so um, if, you have, if you have the right graphic, graphic card, the right driver and uh, latest uh, latest browser, you're, you're getting this kind of uh, visualization. Um, we implemented a demo application which is available at uh, webglers.com, uh, which you can try at any time. Uh, the features is we are loading spherical Mercator tiles, uh, so you can display like OpenStreetMap data, MapQuest, uh, Open Aerial Map once it's come up, uh, and uh, we. Uh, we have also implementation of, uh, of fly through mode uh, and uh, search in a gazette here, in this case it's done uh, with OpenStreetMap uh, Nominatim uh, database and uh, uh, we implemented uh, simple, simple version, simple displaying of uh, markers and uh, pop-ups. All of this runs in the browser, which means uh, the, the whole earth is like a component in a DOM of browser, you can apply CSS on it or you can move it around with, uh, with the same operations like, like you are like you're applying on traditional image, it's just you know, dynamic. Um, the, we have a cool, cool stuff to, to show in here, this is probably one of the most exciting Google Maps API application we ever saw, uh, because uh, it's in 3D. It's really Google Maps API. The, the WebGLers runs inside of a, of a browser, which allows you to use other browser technologies, but uh, uh, apply things on them in, with 3D, har 3D hardware acceleration. Um, so in this, in this uh, demo, we are showing the, the Google Maps, uh, Google Maps mapping data uh, in 3D inside of WebGLers. Uh, the, other, the other already implemented function is uh, WMS overlay, uh, so you can, you can put on, on the earth your own WMS raster data and change opacity. Um, with, the, with the Google Maps binding, uh, we, are, we are using the same, we are using a documented function, uh, get tile from Google Maps API. Uh, which, was, uh, which was used also in, uh, in open layers layer Google NG, uh, but uh, unfortunately in the beginning of this week 
Uh, I've realized that, that Google complained that they don't, do not like this kind of usage of their data. So, uh, so we are pushed to, to remove the support. Uh, it's a really pity because Google has really excellent data and uh, we would be thrilled to be able to use their data in this form. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems we, we, have, to, we have to turn it down. Um, the, the, the problems, uh, why, why this uh, kind of access uh, to Google Maps, even though it's documented, uh, is not allowed, was discussed on Open Layers, uh, open layers mailing list. Uh, I just didn't know about it till the beginning of this week, and the uh, Google guys allowed me to, to show it to you at least, at least now. Uh, in all cases, you can use other tiles, you can use other, other sources of imagery, uh, and uh, you, can, you can try it right now at this, at this address. Uh, what is the mission of the project WebGLers? So, we were highly concentrated on user friendliness. Uh, we wanted to have really Dragging, zooming, which is natural for people, which they know from other products. And uh, uh, we wanted uh, to keep it simple, as, sim as simple as possible, and as web-based as possible. Uh, the uh, raster data are from uh, pre-rendered tiles, uh, from, uh, from uh, WMS, uh, or they can use uh, existing tile API if, if uh, the license allows to do that. Um, the, the target is to be able to use data from GeoServer, Tilecache, and, and other open source projects and just visualize them in 3D. Um, one of the approach we are really keen on is uh, no server, which means you don't need any software, neither to share the data uh, nor to run the 3D applications which you develop because all what you need is inside of web browser. So you can, in fact, pre-render the tiles, put them into a directory, and, uh, and uh, get a JavaScript file where you write the application and just open it from, from the directory and, and visualize the data in 3D and do some interaction as, as you want, even offline. Uh, and uh, this, this also brings the possibility to host the data in the cloud quite easily because you don't need to install any server software either. But of course, if you want, you don't need, you, you are not pushed to use pre-rendered tiles. You can use also WMS or dynamically provided uh, uh, data sources. Uh, another, another thing which we are, like uh, one of our theses is uh, a calculation move from CPU to GPU. Whatever is possible to do on the <laughs> graphic card, do that on the graphic card. Uh, Pre-processing, whatever you can do uh, in advance, uh, you should do in advance, prepare JSON data, not, not do parsing, not do things on, on, uh, in JavaScript because it's too slow. Uh, so do pre-processing. Uh, the, the whole project is, is uh, open source and uh, we are really keen to, to uh, involve community in uh, development. So if you guys want to play with this stuff, it's on GitHub, you can you can fork it, you can, you can play, really uh, do, do whatever you want with the code. Uh, the way how it's available, uh, there are two, two ways how you can use the, uh, the WebGLers. Uh, one of them is a simple JavaScript API um, where, where you have just you know, available functions like uh, initialization of the, of the globe and uh, rotate, uh, rotate to a different position, tilt the camera, a set of functions like, like in Google Maps API or like in open layers. Uh, the other way how you can use WebGLers is through the code base. Um, the, the code base is, uh, is compiled. Uh, we are using a, a Google Closure Library, the same, uh, the same stack which is used behind Google uh, products like, uh, like Google Dots or Google Maps. Uh, is used also for, for WebGL development. It was released uh, as open source by Google like one and a half year ago, I think. Uh, and we, we are like completely using their, their way how to develop software in JavaScript. And it's very powerful. Um, the, uh, already now, the open source project is like attracted several, several contributors and I'm very, very glad for that. So camp to camp is on board. Uh, a university from Spain, uh, guys who are working on 
uh, 3D, 3D storage uh, or storage, storage for 3D buildings, uh, open source project, and we had contribution from uh, NOAA as well. They contributed WMS layer into, into WebGLers. So thank you guys. Um, the, the example, the, the easiest use of WebGL is through the API and it uh, looks quite easy, like in, in, in three lines. You can, you can embed the, the globe in, in, a, in a diff on your website and uh, uh, the, the, the API allows you to uh, put overlay on top of it, put markers, pop-ups, uh, control the whole globe, uh, say that you don't want uh, people to rotate it so you can like uh, uh, make a programming of animations in JavaScript in advance and then you can just play it without interaction or or different thing, kind of stuff, but, the, but the, the list of the functions is limited and it's just designed to be uh, easy to use for, for the beginners. Um, yeah, the, the camera API also also this, this fly too, and uh, uh, as I said before, canvas is part of a DOM, which means you can do a really cool stuff like uh, have the have the WebGLers in the background and put uh, transparent layers on top of it. So display, instead of pop-ups, display like shaded, uh, shaded uh, information boxes on, to on top of it, which is something what you can't do at all with Googlers uh, plugin because, uh, because it's not part of, of the web browser model. You can't like combine it with the other technologies. With WebGLers, you can. Um, to the code base. Uh, the whole, the whole source code of the demo application, which is available at webglers.com, is, is available on GitHub, so you can just fork it and, and adjust it the way you want. Uh, the, the API uh, itself, the export, the, the way how the API is written, is, is on GitHub as well, so people can submit patches. Uh, the whole project, as I said before, is compiled with Closure Compiler. If you want to know more about the advantages of Closure Compiler, I, I've written a blog post about it for Open Layer 3, like what are the advantages uh, of using uh, Closure library and compiler, or mostly compiler for, for writing bigger open source projects. So read it if you are interested in this. Uh, the whole source code of WebGLers is documented uh, and following Google style guidelines. Um, which means the, the documentation can be generated out of it and really every function is documented. The, uh, the variables in JavaScript normally doesn't support types in WebGLers. Uh, thanks to the closure, closure compiler, uh, you are allowed to define a type on, on a variable. And uh, once you are using the variable, the compiler warns you. Uh, I didn't say that before, but the compiler is just compiling the JavaScript code, which is readable for programmers, into JavaScript code, which is highly optimized uh, to run on wherever, mobile devices or, or somewhere else. But it's like three to four times faster according our tests on, on WebGLers uh, to use the compiled minified version. And uh, you can do a lot of fancy stuff like uh, create the base uh, of the project and then dynamically load and other functions. Uh, into JavaScript and all of this is like kind of for free when you when you use the, the compiler. Um, if you want to try to play with uh, with the code base of WebGLers, um, we prepared uh, a manual documentation of uh, how is how, how are the internals in the projects done, so you can like uh, review it. Um, the the basic overview is just uh, we have we have the rendering core uh, split it from any controls or widgets for the users. So, so it can be like exported and or used with different uh, future libraries like, like, uh, like open layers is used. Um, and uh, this, this, this core is, is, is the v, VE or WE um, um, object hierarchy and, and the, the two applications, two example applications are separate. Um, if you start to code with, uh, with WebGL, it's important to know the concept of shaders because in WebGL, in fact, you are putting like C-like language into, into HTML website, uh, which looks like that. You are writing two uh, shaders uh, where one of them, when it's simplified, are, are creating the triangles and another is mapping pixels to the triangles. Um, 
but it's very simple. <laughs> um, this, this, this is uh, a demo uh, which is in fact doing uh, transformation uh, of uh, coordinates, so, so warping, warping of the raster uh, on GPU inside of a web browser from unprojected into Mercator tile. And uh, this kind of stuff can be can be ported into open layers, like to to make uh, uh, to display the layers in different map projection. Then it's available. So I hope somebody from open layers will will jump on this later on. <laughs> uh, the the keep it simple design of WebGL Earth. Um, we are using the model where the Earth is a sphere with diameter one uh, to be maximally simple. It's, uh, it's the same approach like in Google Maps, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so WGS84 coordinates on ellipsoid are in fact directly used on Sphere without any uh, transformation. And this simplifies the equations. Of course, you have to keep this in mind. So when you are doing calculations like distance from one point to another, uh, you have to calculate, of course, on, on ellipsoid. Otherwise, you will, you will get wrong, wrong results. But for visualization, I, I think this is, this is just fine and it really simplifies the math uh, you need to do. Uh, the textures, for simplicity in this moment, we have uh, only spherical Mercator tiles uh, in, in known projection. So something what like GeoWeb Cache produced for you or Tile Cache or, or Map Server if you set it right, the right way. Um, the, the textures are uh, using mega textures. Uh, approach with, with lookup table and uh, uh, the whole the whole ORS model is done with segmented plane so we do not have really the huge sphere in a, in a, in a graphic card we just have uh, like a small small part of the sphere depending on where you are looking at otherwise it would not be good for performance uh, the there is uh, more triangles uh, close to you uh, and less triangles farther from the camera and when you are rotating uh, the, the segmented plane is simply adjusting the way that uh, that you don't realize that you are, you are not looking at a sphere, but just a subset of a sphere. Um, for terrain, uh, we uh, the, the same principle can be used as well, and you, you are just reading the elevation data and adjusting the, the segmented plane. Uh, so so putting putting on the depending on the elevation data, you can you can higher or lower <coughs> the the uh, vertexes. Um, this is kind of like an innovative approach. Uh, how to do that the other, uh, we are doing that in, 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 a, frag, in a fragment shader uh, directly, which, which is uh, research which brings some trouble, but uh, from my point of view, uh, it's, it's manageable. The way how, how to encode your own uh, elevation data to visualize in this way is, uh, did, you, did you get the, the DEM? and uh, you have to prepare it for the browser. Browsers are not able to uh, read, uh, read images with 16-bit or 32-bit, uh, which is a resolution you need for, for elevation. So um, we, we are like splitting the, this, this elevation value into R and G channels of RGBA and then reading it. We, we rendered with our MapTiler cluster uh, software, the elevation for the holders, so so we have like a data set uh, to play with, and uh, when uh, when it can be used also for other other f uh, quite interesting web G web GL or even even HTML5 simple Canvas 2D applications, because you can do like um, hill shading in the real time or or other other uh, cool things with with such such tiles, Mercator tiles, which are in fact. Uh, with elevation values. Uh, in WebGLers, they are used in this way. So uh, in this moment, like some of the tiles are, are satellite imagery, and other tiles are, are giving you the elevation data, and then the segmented plane is adjusted. So, so you are looking at the terrain, that, that's it. Um, in this moment, it, this, is, this is under development. It's not like uh, ready for for usage, but but uh, the prototype shows that it it can be a viable way how to how to uh, do the terrain. Um, another another cool prototypes were done uh, by Tom here uh, for for uh, visualizing of uh, of 3D buildings. Uh, again, 
not production ready, but we are on the way. If, if there is a need to do this kind of visualization, it's possible. Um, in this moment, we are not showing vector data directly in WebGLers because we didn't have requests uh, from, from anybody, from, from any client uh, to do this kind of uh, work. So if you want to display vector data, you have to pre-render it, like put, uh, render the tiles with GeoServer or other, other server-based solution. Uh, but technically, it's of course possible to display any vector data. Uh, what was my idea is like to not uh, duplicate the code and share maximally like um, the the importing of the data, different data read, uh, parsing of different formats uh, between projects. Because from my point of view, it doesn't make sense to implement the same stuff like like the open layers guys uh, are doing, or leaflet guys are doing, or or other other projects are doing. So. So we are like seeking seeking a way how to how to merge the forces in in this. Um, well, the alpha version of uh, of WebGLers kind of runs on uh, on mobile because the um, this is this is Android and uh, Firefox uh, uh, beta. Uh, but in this moment, um, the only way how you can get it on mobile devices is through Firefox beta because the other browsers uh, do not have the WebGLers yet turned on. And uh, hardware acceleration and implementation uh, of WebGL standard inside of a mobile browsers is not yet ma mature enough. Uh, but it's quite, uh, quite clear that, uh, that the world goes in this direction. So um, we are trying to, to write uh, WebGLers in a way where where it will run on mobile devices in the future once the mobile devices are ready for that. Uh, from the hardware point of view, they are already ready to, to be used in this way, but uh, the software is not, not prepared. Um, we, we've got some, some, some troubles with WebGL uh, because it's still cutting edge technology. It's not really finished. There are no, no um, released products uh, behind, uh, beside, beside, beside a few game games or prototypes, experiments with this technology. So um, the, the one one of the issues is uh, support of graphic cards that, um, on on Apple computers, for example, it runs uh, on all. But but uh, there is quite a long list of black, blacklisted graphic cards uh, where where the developers of of web browsers are working on it. They are they are allowing more graphic cards to to support WebGL, but it's 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 a process which takes some time. Um, another like big hit for WebGLers and other other uh, GIS application uh, based on WebGL technology is uh, introduction of restrictions of uh, loading imagery data cross domain. So uh, in in June 2011, like uh, one year after WebGL standard was. Uh, was uh, you could play with uh, was was introduced this restriction and uh, in this moment it's the only work around which really runs is to run your own HTTP proxy on a on a server where you have the JavaScript application which kind of yeah, sucks so uh, uh, the the planned way how to how to go around this is uh, to add into the servers. Uh, HTTP header when you are serving the imagery, access control allow origin, uh, which then allows WebGL to use such imagery from a different server where the applications run in as a texture, so for any processing you, you want. Uh, I hope that on the coding, coding spring on Saturday, I will like push several projects to add this header uh, in the right place. Um, on the client side, the only browser which supports this header is in this moment the beta version of Chrome, so version 15. And for Firefox, I would like to push you to uh, vote on their on their bugzilla that this is important issue for for GIS people, and uh, uh, that they should implement it as soon as possible because now they are moving it, moving it to a to a farther version. So I'm really keen to see this in in Firefox. Uh, in all cases, the tiles which are hosted on your own server are are really fine. So, uh, if you people who have Firefox 4 and up uh, Chrome 9 and up can use uh, WebGLers 
uh, if you have tiles on the same server or if you set up the HTTP proxy. If you want to try uh, the WebGLers, the easiest way how to do that is like check the JavaScript API examples and then download some tiles, get the tiles uh, uh, from, uh, from like mapbox.com where, where you can uh, uh, download prepared data set, uh, some of them you, sh you, you have seen and uh, use like MBUtil utility from GitHub to export the tiles and then you receive directory with PNG files and, and you, you, you can directly experiment with the API and do whatever you want. Um, then, then such an application is kind of like almost ready for production. Uh, so uh, if you are fine that uh, with the supported browsers, it's, it's prepared to be used, really. Uh, so, thank you for your attention. The, the demo application is at webglers.com. All the things which are uh, for developers, so source code is on GitHub, but uh, it's linked from webglers.org. Uh, you get uh, the manual, the reference documentation, like uh, simple, simple guides. So, so just go and, and uh, uh, try this technology. Thank you. <laughs>